All right, so this is going to be my last uh, builds guide of season 12 for Warwick. And I want to make something real quick because I'm pretty confident about the builds that Warwick has or, or the steps that I've been running in every role. I've been winning in every role pretty reliably. So I want to just kind of give it to you guys. Now, do know I'm not going to include gameplay in this video. I normally do, but I just want to go ahead and just give you guys the all the builds I've been running ASAP. And if you want to see gameplay, uh, connected to these bills, just just subscribe to my channel if you haven't, or just you know watch my other videos, right? Because I'm gonna be posting plenty of gameplay videos, and I already have posted some. So, anyways, let's get just straight into it right away. Let's talk summoner spells, okay? So, um, these builds are gonna be for mid lane, top lane, and jungle Warwick, of course. Uh, mid lane Warwick's kind of more of a specialty of mine, but obviously, most people are gonna pl plenty of people play top lane Warwick, jungle Warwick, so. No, but we're talking about all of it, so, um, because uh, a lot of the builds overlap, and a lot of the setups and builds overlap, and that's kind of the nice thing about Warwick's uh, builds right now, is he has options, but the, the options are pretty good in every single role. So as far as summoner spells are concerned, in mid lane, you're going to be going flash barrier, in top lane, you're going to be going flash barrier. Now there are some situations um, in the top lane, where you might want to go teleports, or even exhaust. I've actually ran exhaust to success before, but I'd say 99% of the time you're going to be wanting to run barrier. It's just like a good standard to go by and it's good to get used to barrier because it just gives you really good baits, allows you to make, uh, it just gives you so much laning power and allows you to snowball lane really, really hard. The one option that is kind of notable that you will be, you might be willing to go sometimes is going to be ignite. Ignite is good into range marksman usually, um, or really like any range champion that you think that you have level six kill pressure on. But for, for the for, for the most case, or for, for the most part, in a lot of cases, um, you are able to just out sustain a lot of poke champions, which just means barrier is just better overall. This like like ignite is if you just, if you just can't like lane versus them pre six and you have to play for the level six all in. Uh, an another option you can go actually is ghost. I go flash ghost sometimes. Uh, most notably, I guess recently, I've been going Ghost, Flash Ghost into Swain. Really, it's just like any like... I don't know. I, I guess it's really just kind of if you feel like you need to be able to run down a target. Uh, you know, and, and you just want the extra scaling with Ghost. Like maybe you just feel like Barrier um, is not going to like help you like win lane harder. And you need to just play for scaling. Then you can go Flash Ghost. But for the most part, in the jungle, or sorry, in top lane and mid lane, we're going to be going Flash Barrier. And then jungle now, you actually have two options. You can go Flash Smite, which is normal, or you can go Ghost Smite. And actually, even though I'm a huge fan of, of Flash on Warwick, it gives you really good mid-game playmaking and allows you to dive backline carries really well. So if you want to do that, you can look for, for, look for Flash. Ghost is what I've been running almost every single game um, on Warwick Jungle because it gives you much more early game gank pressure. Uh, it has a shorter cooldown. It just allows you to ghost into lane and actually like not get kited, catch up to people, and uh, yeah, I, I mean it, it's just it's such a good early game summoner spell for Warwick because the problem with like Warwick's W, people think that you just press W and gank a lane. Well, Warwick's W is out of combat movement speed, so that means when you walk to a lane and they hit you, now they're just kiting you. So uh, ghosts actually you know gives you in combat movement speed, which prevents that. Uh, that's the one thing I like. Obviously, Ghost also has resets. You can pop Ghost before getting a uh, like a, a, a kill or an assist in a fight. And then you just have a super, super long Ghost duration and have permanent movement speed up. And um, it does scale well in that sense. Like the, the only thing, the only like notable disadvantage to Ghost is that lack of dive potential. Like if you're trying to, to dive the enemy ADC, you're not going to be able to do that as reliably with Ghost. Okay, so let's, let's just hop into runes real quick. Um... So let's just check out these. These are these are my runes for in top lane work uh, for top lane in mid lane work. Um, I actually go these runes almost always in mid lane for mid lane work. Uh, but for top lane work, I go it in certain matchups. These are going to be your short trade runes. So if you're trying to play it versus a matchup that's like a, a champion that wants you want to short trade versus, um, think like Riven, Fiora, Camille, Akali. What do these champions have in common? Well, they can trade with you and then they can get out right away. You know they. they like, it's hard for you to, like, really all in them because they can just choose to disengage. That is where Grasp really comes into play. 
Um, and yeah, you just walk up, press Q, pop grass. It's all, it's all, you know, nice. Um, the follow-up runes, demolish, is just real. This this cannot be understated how amazing this this uh is on Warwick because the amount of plates you can get when you have a lead in lane is ridiculous. And even if you don't get plates early because maybe you fall behind or something like that, it actually gives you just some decent uh, tower taking potential that you just wouldn't have otherwise. Second wind is just good by default. You can opt into uh, bone plating. That is an option um, in some matchups. You can also go conditioning if you're greedy and want to play for scaling. Most of the time though, I just stick with second wind. I'm used to it and it allows me to play more aggressive in lane and that's what I like. You can go revitalize. You can technically go unflinching sometimes. There are situations where I do go unflinching, but I just stick with revitalize most of the time. Presence of mind, necessary because Warwick really needs the mana um, in, team, in team fights especially. You're going to go oom um if you don't have presence of mind because Warwick's man base mana pool is just really bad. And then you can go with last stand. Although I will say I don't always go like even with like this rune set. Sometimes um, if I'm playing against a lot of CC and I'll just forego last stands and I'll just go presence of minds and legend tenacity. So I do do this sometimes if you think you really need a tenacity. But otherwise just default to last stand because it's just good synergy with Warwick. And then as far as your your rune stats are concerned, I'll just get this out of the way. This is the kind of the case for every single rune set. Attack speed always. Um, technically in lane, you can go adaptive force, but I always just go attack speed because I'm used to it. Um, you go adaptive force in most matchups, but if you're playing against a, a matchup that can poke you down really hard, um, and maybe you need a little bit extra resist to survive the poke, then you'll go double resist. So if you're playing against like a like Gangplank, for example, I'll go double armor versus Gangplank or Jace. If I'm playing against like Cassiopeia or Azir or I don't know, Themo, stuff like that, we go double magic resist. But generally speaking, by default, we go adaptive force. Now, as far as your other top lane uh, runes, we have, um, but we're just gonna go on this page. And the, the, the main difference here is you can go, well, you can go press the attack, lethal tempo, or conquer. I actually really don't go pr uh, press the attack much anymore. Um, for the most part, I usually just stick with lethal tempo or conquer. Lethal tempo, gives you a lot better early game all-in power and conquer gives you better scaling damage because the attack damage scales better for work over the attack speed um so it really just comes down to like what do you what do you want do you want the early game power or do you want the late game power uh pretty straightforward i go lethal tempo versus a lot of tanks usually i go up versus certain bruisers maybe like a mordekaiser that are a little bit harder for me to deal with if i am playing against an easy matchup that i can all in versus but i also don't need like this much like like I, if I if I just beat the matchup by default basically then I'll just play for the scaling so for example versus Tridomir where if I take Conquer versus Tridomir Conquer gives me enough damage to beat him in the 1v1 in laning phase and then I can also just scale on top of that so I don't need lethal tempo um, also actually in, in another sense I actually go Conquer versus Yone and Yasuo because Lethal, lethal Tempo doesn't give me enough uh, damage to beat them in like levels 1 through 3 in their early game. They're just going to be able to beat me in the 1v1. So because this doesn't actually like make a difference, I would rather just go with Conquer and scale a little bit better. Um, so yeah, those are the runes. And once again, these are for like all-in. These are all-in runes. So you want to go Grass for short trade, you go Conquer, Lethal Tempo for all-in or like just long trade. So thinking like Bruisers, Tanks like Wukong, Mordekaiser's. Champions that can't disengage you very easily. And then once again, press the attack. You go Legend of Alacrity by default or Tenacity if you need the Tenacity. Last stands. And then uh, you actually have a couple options you can go. Um, the greedy route is to go Demolish and Revitalize. I would do this versus good matchups. Matchups I'm comfortable in. I'll go Demolish and Revitalize because I think I can like crack a bunch of plates and stuff. If I'm playing against a matchup I'm not really comfortable in or like in some niche scenarios. Like, so for example, versus Shen. Um, he can taunt me into the turret, so I can't really proc plates much, so I just won't go demolish. Um, but in, in like some harder matchups, say like Renekton uh, or Aatrox, then I might go Bone Plating or Second Winds with Revitalize, and it'll just give me that extra early, early game power. As far as jungle runes are concerned, these have been my jungle runes. Now, I will say that you can obviously go... Revitalized conditioning, these runes are always good and pretty standard. Um, so if you're not playing for the early game and you're playing a more like farm heavy or just a more like 
if you're just not playing, like, especially for the early game as Warwick, and you're just trying to farm it up, go these runes. These runes are, these runes are great. But my recent play style has been more early game focused and playing around yanking a lot. Um, thus, I really like Treasure Hunter, and I really like Eyeball Collection. These, these runes help you snowball really hard if you're getting a lot of kills during ganked. And then as far as the uh, Keystone rune that I'm running, I go press the attack or I go lethal tempo. And it really comes down to like the enemy team comp. So if I'm playing against a lot of like lane like champions that's like either kite me really well or they're just really squishy, press the attack gives you more upfront burst, and that is nice. It's reliable. Uh, if they're more sustain or like frontliners that don't that don't kite you very well, like you know you're playing against like Diana for example, she's just going to be fighting you back. Lethal tempo is good for scrapping it out there. Uh, and, and again, you can go Conquer for the scaling option in this rune set as well. But for the most part, I've been playing more for the early games, so I've been liking Press the Attack for ganking power, Lethal Tempo for, like, skirmishing. Now let's talk about builds here. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's... The builds are kind of the same for most of the roles, but there's a couple builds that definitely stand out uh, or are only good in, like, certain roles. So let's just look at starting items in general. Um, for, for the jungle, Red Smite and Blue Smite are about even now. Ever since Red Smite got nerfed, um, it used to be OP and you just go every time. But ever since Red Smite got nerfed, uh, they're actually pretty even. So it's it's pretty straightforward. You go Red Smite if people are going to be fighting you back and they're not going to kite you. You play Blue Smite if you're playing against like ranged champions that you just like. If you just need like the slow and movement speed bonus to get on top of someone to kill them, then you'll go Blue Smite. So. Uh, there's nothing really too complicated about that. Uh, for top lane, mid lane Warwick, you're going to be going D shield 90% of the time. The only situations you ever go D blade is if you're going lethal tempo. And you think it like the extra damage is like really helpful for snowballing the matchup. So like I'll go D blade versus Orn, for example. That's the one thing I can think of off the top of my head because I go lethal tempo and D blade versus Orn so I can try to kill him in the early game. Uh, Mordekaiser is probably another one as well. But for the most part, just go with D-Shield. And the reason why d shield's so good with Warwick is that the health regen goes up the lower the health you are. And because you're low health all the time, that just makes you way more obnoxious to kill in lane. And it's not like it necessarily a defensive. Like, you, get, you can't think of D-Shield as just a defensive item. It's actually an offensive item in a sense. Because, like, if, if you're harder to kill, you can play more aggressive and play more reckless in lane. And that's just, that's just how I use a D-Shield. I use it as an offensive aggressive item to bully my lane opponents more. As far as boots are concerned, uh, I should probably like probably order it this way. These are this is usually the order uh, I consider the boots. So I just think, you know, do they have a lot of auto attack based champions? They have like two, two, three or more uh, auto attack based champions that deal a lot of auto damage to me. Like maybe they're just like really fed or just they just have a lot of auto back, auto attack based champions in general. I'll go play the steel caps, and uh, you know, in the same vein, if they have a lot of CC, I'll go Merc Treads. Also, if I'm behind, so if, if I'm not snowballing, I'll actually consider these tank tank boot options a lot more. If I'm snowballing, I'll be looking more for CDR because then I'm already really tanky and I'm looking to just uh, have lower CDs so that I can spam more and snowball harder. But if I'm behind or I'm just like not ahead, then I'll consider the tank boot options more. And then CDR boots, obviously cheapest boot options. CDR is great in Warwick, lower uh, summoner spell. CDs, they're just always good, basically. Uh, they're just like your default boots. If, if neither of these boots really stand out, just go with Iron and Boots. They're awesome. All right, now let's talk top lane build. So, so this is going to be a specific top lane build. Um, yeah, so Divine Sunder on Warwick is kind of trash. It's, it's actually really trash in general, except for in the top lane. So in, in the jungle, never go Divine Sunder. Um, in the mid lane, probably don't go Divine Sunder, but in the uh, but in the top lane, you can actually go Divine Sunder in certain matchups. It's really, really ma matchup dependent. Basically, Divine Sunder is a really strong one item power spike. It is a really strong early game lane bully item. Um, and so if you, you're in a matchup where you think you can snowball really hard with Divine Sunder, uh, then you can go for Divine Sunder. It gives, makes you really tanky, gives you a ton of poke damage, synergizes super well with Grasp. So in those matchups where I said you want a short trade versus, you know, Riven, Camille, Fiora, Kali, stuff like that, Divine Sunder is great in those matchups. Um, 
You can go in versus some other matchups as well. Uh, but the key thing really is just considering will will buying Div divine sender help me snowball my matchup harder? That that's really what you got to think about because this item does not scale well. This item does not scale very well in general. Uh, but it gives you just really, really strong and reliable early game. Plus, it's pretty easy, pretty simple to use. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Usually after Divine, there's other options you can go after Divine, but usually your second item is going to be Titanic Hydra or Ravenous Hydra. By default, you're going to be going Titanic Hydra because it just gives you the tankiness you need, gives you the wave clear you need. But Ravenous Hydra is something I experimented with a couple like months ago, and I actually really liked it. So the, the only situations though where you want to go Ravenous is if, so if, if you go Divine Sunder and you actually successfully snowball your lane and your team is ahead and like your team is not behind, so you're not going to be too squishy, Ravenous Hydra is great because it gives you CDR to spam your Q more and spam your E more and that is awesome. Do not go Ravenous Hydra if you're behind though because you're going to be, you're just going to get one shot. But if you're ahead, the extra CDR is, is going to be great uh, is basically what I'm saying here. Now, your other early game option for the top lane, as well as in the jungle, is going to be Blade of the Rune King. So you go Bork for all, for, well, you go Divine Sunder for early, like, short trade option, and you go Bork for early all-in option. Um, and it makes sense why you'd go this in the jungle, because you're not short trading with anyone in the jungle. You're ganking them, you're trying to 100 to 0 them. That's why Bork is here. But yeah, Bork is just awesome. Um, even the jungle. You notice I don't have Tiamat. You don't need Tiamat to clear the jungle, really. It doesn't actually... Tiamat's kind of a trash item, so it doesn't increase your clear speed by, like, that much more. It's not that noticeable, so it's not worth, like, spending the extra gold on it. So just rush straight into Bork. Bork gives you a ton of damage. The one problem, of course, with Bork is that you lack any form of tankiness. You're, like, going to get one shot if you're not careful. But your damage is absurd. And, and with Bork, you just never have damage problems because Warwick's general, like... Like, Warwick as a champion, his general issue is, like, or his strength is, is he deals a lot of damage against enemies that are below half health, but he struggles to bring enemies below below half health. But with Bork, you don't struggle at any point, so this, it synergizes really, really, really well, really, really well with Warwick in that sense. Um, but yeah, the one thing about Bork, the only issue is that it doesn't scale very well um, in general because it just, you're just so squishy with it. And sometimes you can also get kited, and that can be a problem. But it gives you just insane one item power spike. You just can one shot people with your ultimate Q, maybe an auto attack. And you're just gonna one shot squishies. It's, it's just ridiculous damage. And this is basically what I go uh, most of the time. Well, I, it's what I go half the time in the jungle, actually. Um, again, it depends on if I get kited or not. So if I think that, uh, if I'm if I'm trying to hit the front line more, playing against a lot of bruisers, uh, divers, assassins, and just like fighters type champions stuff like Aurelia for example Bork is really great versus those type of champions because I'm just gonna be you know smacking them to death if I'm trying to play more dive that'll be later builds if I'm trying to play a little bit dive or more of a frontline role then I'll go with later builds but if, if I'm trying early game snowball versus champions that don't kite me I like Bork and then your uh, tank mythic options are going to be uh, turbo kim tank frostfire sunfire or Gore Drinker. Uh, I'm actually going to go into most of these tank mythic options um, in the next next build, so we'll talk about it here in a second. But I will mention that the only time I go Sunfire or Gore Drinker with Bork is if I'm snowballing. Um, so these are like both two different snowball options. It kind of just depends on what you want. If you build either, especially if you build Gore Drinker while behind, uh, you're kind of trolling. Um, it's just not going to work out. But if you're ahead, it can work out uh, fantastically because the heal can just be ridiculous if you're ahead and you're already hard to kill. Uh, the one one reason why I actually like Gore Drink with Bork in particular is that generally if you build Gore Drink Gore Drinker on Warwick, you're going to lack uh, damage. But Bork gives you enough damage, so that's why it opens up the, opens up the option to go Gore Drinker. So that's what we're doing here. All right. So as far as your general, like this is going to be probably the most general. Um, basic build that you're going to be going in every single role on Warwick. And I, de I definitely build, uh, I build Titanic Hydra more than anything else. Easily. It is good in it, like almost any scenario. The only issue with Titanic Hydra is it gives you weaker early game power compared to Bork or Sunder. Um, so again, if you're trying to snowball the early game a little bit more, you can go those options. But if you just want a more reliable mid game and you want to scale better, 
Titanic Rush is fantastic. It gives you wave clear, gives you tankiness, gives you a little bit of damage as well. And your tank mythics options is going to be Frostfire, uh, Sunfire, and Turbo Chem Tank. Frostfire, you're going to be going after Titanic if you want to be the front line. If you want to be a pure tank, if you want to be the engage of your team, the front line, and you just want to soak damage, that is when you go Frostfire because it gives you more tankiness with the passive and it gives you some utility. Um, so I'll usually go Frostfire if my team really needs a front line and then we already have plenty of damage. Or if I'm just behind and I'm trying to play Econ I, and I'm like, well, I don't really have kill pressure on anyone, so I might as well just play tank and just try to serve my role that, that way. If you are trying to 1v9 games or scale harder in the team fights and you're playing against a lot of fighters and frontline champions, divers, tanks, stuff like that, then uh, Sunfire is actually great. So Titanic Sunfire, this is, it, it did get nerfed um, and I was complaining about it, but I did the math wrong so it wasn't as bad as I thought. But Titanic, or sorry, Sunfire with Titanic Hydra is just insane. Like Warwick is a team fighting monster with uh, with with this item. Uh, the only problem is if you're behind, it can be problematic. So if you're really if you're like fall behind, you're not going to be able to stack the Sunfire very well and get much value out of the damage. Or if you're going to get kited really hard, it's usually not going to be the best um, going Sunfire here. But this gives you the, this gives you carry damage while opening up the ability to just build pure tank. So you can become a build like pure unkillable tank and just never die while also dealing the damage of a carry, which is just absurd. And that, that's why this item is so ridiculous. Uh, Turbo Kim Tank is, is an item that I build if I'm trying to play as a diver. So if, I, if I'm playing against a lot of squishy champions, then I will go Turbo Kim Tank. I mean, just like look at my, my uh, matches. Oh, I, I, never mind. Yeah, right. We'll look at my match history here, and then I think it's kind of ugly, but I know I, I know I once, yeah, see, did it this game right here in the jungle. I mean, let's look at this enemy team comp. All right, so we got tight, we got Turbo Chem Tank, and we're playing against Misfortune, Ari, Kha'Zix, Nautilus, and sure, Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser's pretty tanky. Good option to go Sunfire versus him, but there's like at least three champions here where they're like pretty squishy and they're gonna they're pretty kitey. So going uh, Turbo Camp Tank is just going to give me upfront burst, and the active is going to allow me to catch up to the, some of them if they if I'm trying to catch up to them. So that is where I like Titanic Hydra. Uh, one second, so let's get back to this. Where is builds, man? Oh, items. Second builds. All right, so yeah, so these are this is, I usually go Titanic into some of these tank items, but I uh, you know one thing we're gonna mention here, so a, a tech that I discovered in the last couple months that is really really useful. This is really really useful, and that's why there's so many options here. If you're going Titanic Hydra, and you think you need a little bit extra damage, because do notice if you're going Titanic Hydra to Frostfire, Titanic Hydra to Sunfire, etc. You're going to lack a lot of mid-game power. You're going to lack mid-game damage. You don't have much kill potential. If you're, even if you're going Sunfire, you need to like be in a fight for like 8 seconds before you start dealing damage. And if you're going like Turbo Chem Tank, you're going to be really tanky, but your burst, again, if you're trying to play a dive, your burst is not going to be that high. So, as a second item after Titanic, before your Mythic, so like right in between here, right? Right in between here. You can go any of these damage options because they're usually pretty cheap. Um, well, a couple of these options aren't cheap, but a lot of these options, or a couple of these options are at least pretty cheap, relatively speaking. They have really good build paths, and they give you flat damage that makes your mid-game so much better. It makes it just so much better. So, the only, the only situations where I won't build these is if, like, so if I'm going, like, Sunfire, um, well, well, it's just, it's pretty simple, actually. Do you, if you think you really need the damage, just build damage. If you think you don't need the damage or you can't afford to build damage, say you fall behind and you're going the tank route, you know, obviously if you're going to try to be a frontline tank, you're not going to need damage at that point. You're just going to try to build full tank. But if you're going to try to, if, if you really want kill potential in the mid game, going one of these items is great. Um, by default, actually, a lot of times I go Yomu's Ghost Blade, especially when I'm going Titanic uh, Chem Tank um, or uh, Titanic into Chem Tank. 
I usually get uh, Ghost Blade in between, so I'll go Titanic, Ghost Blade, Kim Tank. That is a core item set that I go a lot of times. It's just really good by default. The attack damage CDR is amazing. The the movement speed is such a good stat in Warwick. The passive movement speed is great. The, the active movement speed is awesome. Obviously, the lethality is kind of wasted, but trust me, it's actually fine as a default item. If the enemy team has a lot of healing, Kempunk Chainsword. If they have a lot of shields, Serpent's Fang. If they have a lot of magic damage, Maw Mal uh, or, or or maybe even Wit's End if they're like a, on the tankier side of things. Black Cleaver, if you just want more CDR or you want to like armor shred maybe for your team. Keep in mind it does synergize with Titanic Hydra so you can get AoE armor shred. And uh, Bork is also an option after Titanic if you really want, to, if you're playing against tankier champions. If, if you're trying to go like, you know, Titanic Rush into tank item, but then you realize, hmm, I need a little bit more raw DPS. Then, then you can go ahead and go Bork. Similarly, actually, well, I'll actually mention it below, but you can go Bork, Bork Rush into Titanic into Tank Item and kind of get there the same way. But yeah, these items are all just really insane for a as a second item if you really need the damage. And I'd say I need the damage probably like 70% of the games I play. Granted, I'm snowballing a lot. Uh, my early game is usually pretty good, but... Uh, yeah, say 70% of the time, I'm going to be building uh, one of these items seconds and then get my mythic third item. Alright, so as far as situational items are concerned, these are all of them. Again, Titanic here, just because if you're going Bork, you can go Titanic Hydra. You don't always have to go Titanic after Bork, but you can do that. Um, so I'll just put this down here, actually. Well, I just removed it, but you guys get the point. But these are all situational items. Um, a lot of these are pretty straightforward. A couple additions I want to kind of mention here. Gargoyle Steel Plate is probably one of my favorites here. This gives gives Warwick the most raw tankiness by far of items. Um, so if you're going like Sunfire or you're going Frostfire and you want to be more of a frontline tank or you want to be able to like stack up your Sunfire more reliably, Gargoyle Steel Plate is insane. Like it gives you a super barrier on the active. It gives you a ton of resist. It gives you CDR. Like everything about this item is so ridiculous on Warwick. The only problem is it's really expensive, but and the build path kind of sucks. But it is really, really strong when you have it complete, and it just gives you just so much survivability. And um, because like you can you can walk into a fight, press E, they're, they're bursting you really hard, you're absorbing the burst through E, you fear them. And then you can use Gargoyle Stone Plate to survive a couple more seconds, life steal a little bit, and then your E's back up. And then it's like you can just stall for so long with Gargoyle Stone Plate. So I just I just love this item. I got the idea. I was watching like Nasus's 1v9 with this item second. I was like, you know what? Probably could do that in work. And it turns out you can. So really, really like uh, Stone Plates. War Mogs, I never actually had on here before. But honestly, I realized that this item is actually pretty good as a snowball tank option. So if you're snowballing, and you've reached the point, like if you're building, if you're really tanky, uh, or you're building tank Warwick and you're like snowballed really hard, and you've reached the point where you just can't die, like the enemy team just basically can't kill you, you're too damn tanky. Warmogs is great then because then you can, if like, you know, you can absorb some ultimate abilities, absorb a lot of pressure, disengage a fight for 10 seconds, come back with full health. Uh, so yeah, it's just a, it's just a really good snowball option if you're, if you've reached that unkillable area. I wouldn't get it from behind, so I wouldn't get it if you're behind, but if you're unkillable or near unkillable, Warmogs is actually good in that sense. Spirit Visage, I uh, haven't really built much Spirit Visage over the last two years, ever since it got nerfed in the, in the Season 11 item rework, but because healing uh, or Grievous Wounds got nerfed, Spirit Visage, as a result, is kind of better, and it does synergize with items like Gargoyle Stone Plates, uh, the bonus health can be nice, you know, with an item like Sunfire, which scales more off of HP nowadays. And Titanic Hydra. And yeah, it's just a good... Uh, it, it never really can go wrong going Spirit Visage. The MR on it is relevant nowadays. Um, yeah, if you just think that you can use the extra healing and some magic resist and health, it's always a good option. Abyssal Mask is always my go-to if my team has a lot of magic damage and the enemy team has a lot of magic damage. Uh, so it's a little bit more situational, but if both teams are pretty AP heavy, Abyssal Mask is, is a smurf item and a half. And actually, I probably should be building it more. I think I say this every single time. And I think I have been building it a little bit more lately. But, I mean, look how cheap it is. It's pretty uh, gold efficient. So, yeah. I mean, it just gives you a lot more damage. And uh, some pretty respectable MR in team fights. 
Uh, let's see, I mean, all these other ones are pretty straightforward. Anathemas is, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> now, the one thing you'll probably notice, I have Cosmic Drive on here. Uh, the only reason I have Cosmic Drive on here, I've actually gone it a few, t a few different times where it actually kind of worked out. Uh, and I posted it in one of my YouTube videos as well, but it's like, uh... It's potentially a good late game CDR option. Because um, the AP becomes really, if you have a lot of CDR, the like the AP is actually decent because Warwick's Q is gonna be more spammable, which means you can deal more damage, heal more, and the movement speed's nice. But um, it's just like a decent potential option late game if you're really hard spec in the CDR and you can afford to build more CDR. Um, so yeah, um, this is just going to be my work builds. I guess one, one thing I want to want to mention real quick also with if you're going towards like the dive build with Turbo Kim Tank, I do often build more into CDR. So I try to combine CDR items a lot more. So I'll go like CDR boots and I'll go Titanic Hydra and I'll go like Rage Blade or I'll go Kim, Kim Sword. I'll go Turbo Kim Tank. And then afterwards, I might go like Black Cleaver for the CDR, and then something like like a Frozen Hearts or a Death Stance or something like that for the for the CDR. So I try to really like snowball the CDR hard if I'm going to dive build. Um, sometimes, uh, unless I think I really need the really need the tankiness. But um, yeah, that that's just kind of those are just the work builds I've been running and having a lot of success with. So let me know what you guys think and uh, let me know how. It goes for you if you try do try out these builds. Peace out.